This episode of the Golf Unfiltered podcast is brought to you by WorldwideGolfShops.com. Be sure to go out to WorldwideGolfShops.com for all of your equipment, apparel, and accessory needs. They've even got training aids. They've got all the great stuff from all the brands that you hear on our podcast every week. So once again, that is WorldwideGolfShops.com. You're listening to the Golf Unfiltered Podcast, your source for in-depth interviews with the biggest names, brands, and personalities in golf. Our mission, to keep you informed and help you enjoy the game even more. And now, the owner and host of the Golf Unfiltered Podcast, Adam Fonseca. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Golf Unfiltered Podcast. I am your host, as always, Adam from GolfUnfiltered.com. Follow us all over social media at Golf Unfiltered. Send us an email, adam at golfunfiltered.com. And be sure to take note of that new email address, by the way. We uh, went ahead and we switched email addresses to make it a little bit easier for us to keep track of everything that comes in. And once again, the new email is just sent directly to me, adam at golfunfiltered.com. Hello to our friends over at Cleveland and Strixon Golf. We'll get back to them here in just a quick second. And, of course, hello to our friends over at thehackersparadise.com. Be sure to go check them out as well. And hi to all of you listening to this on the THP mobile app. So, folks, today we actually welcome a uh, tour rep from Cleveland's Rickson Zegzio, Mr. Michael Jolly. He is uh, specifically in the player development uh, realm. He works very closely with players coming straight out of either junior golf, high school, college, mainly in college, on the amateur circuit, uh, on their way to hopefully the professional tour, and he goes in depth into not only what he has to do every day, and also a little bit of uh, a little bit of behind the scenes as to um, you know the ins and outs of working in player development, specifically for a golf club brand. So a really interesting conversation, one that uh, you know is a step outside of equipment a little bit, and more a little bit more on the business side. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this conversation. Before we get into our talk today. Just want to say, uh, you know, I hope everyone is staying safe. I know that this is a very crazy time for everybody, myself included, everyone here at GUHQ as well. I want to say thank you to everyone who has, um, you know, followed us along the way, of course, who's followed us on on our quarantine streams that my wife and I like to do on Twitter. Um, And we're also trying a lot of live streams out. Uh, during this time. So at the time of this recording, when it gets released, uh, we would have already done a few live streams. And so if you are a brand that is interested in either doing a podcast like this, or if you're interested in doing a live stream, we are uh, testing those waters as well, because that seems to be the biggest drive or the biggest uh, pull right now for a lot of folks, because we're all basically sitting at home. So uh, definitely an open invitation there. You know how to get in touch with me. Once again, it's adam at golfunfiltered.com, or you could send me a message on any of the social media platforms. We're on uh, all the major ones. So uh, with that being said, stay safe, everybody. I, you know, keep your social distance. We're going to kick this thing. We're going to be able to get back out on the golf course very soon, hopefully, because I got to tell you, it's, uh, it's starting to get to me a little bit. But that being said, we're going to have a nice distraction today with this conversation with Michael Jolly from Cleveland's Rickson and Zegzio. I know you love the game, even though it drives every single one of us crazy. Hi, this is Bill Hobson, and I host the Four Golfers Network podcast, where we celebrate golf in every way imaginable. You'll hear interviews with the biggest names in the sport, travel features, special contests, and we even take your calls. So after you listen to Adam and Golf Unfiltered, give us a try. Subscribe to the Four Golfers Network podcast. That's F-O-R-E on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and everywhere else podcasts are found. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. I hope everyone's staying safe inside and riding this uh, this COVID wave out uh, today to help us uh, have a little bit of a distraction and talk a little bit about the tour rep side of things is Mr. Michael Jolly over at Cleveland and Strixon Golf. Michael, it's really nice to speak with you. Thanks for having me on. Looking forward to it. So as I mentioned, you uh, currently are working as a tour rep, specifically in player development. What does that mean for folks who might not be aware of how that relationship works with brands in the tour side? Yeah, so so player development is has always kind of been really important to to the way we do things uh, at a tour level for for our company, um, and it's it's kind of being in the weeds in in amateur and college golf and getting to know um, the players and coaches uh, at that level and us trying to identify. 
um, the players that, that we want going forward to be part of, uh, of our company and represent our brands, uh, hopefully on the PGA tour one day. So it's, it's a lot of networking with players and watching players and evaluating and scouting and then, and then the recruiting part, uh, and informing those relationships with the players, um, at a young age pays dividends down the road as we build those relationships, those guys, um, kind of as they progress through the tours and hopefully we're kind of there by their side and, uh, helping them along the way. And, and they represent us in a way that, that, uh, that that works great for both sides, uh, once they get to the PGA tour. That's awesome. And so how early in a player's career will you start, uh, contacting them, network, networking with them? Um, it, it's usually at the college level, you know, there's, mm-hmm. there's other companies that are, that are really, um, uh, kind of immersed in the, in the junior part and start that early. But for us, it's, it's, um, it's usually a, a college thing and, and mm-hmm. being at college events and, um, starting to talk to players and, and evaluate and watch. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a college thing for okay. us. Cause I know that, uh, in the past we've had a couple folks on the show who have talked about, you know, like the, uh, the youth game, have talked about the amateur game, certainly the collegiate level as well. And so working with college players who, most often are there either on a partial cut scholarship or a full scholarship in some cases, some with no scholarship. But uh, how does those, how do those conversations typically begin? Is it something that the coaches themselves will reach out to a company? You already start kind of cr- uh, recruiting, so to speak. How, how does that work? Yeah, it, it, it really just depends. Um, there's no, for us, there's no kind of cut and dry um, way to do it. I, I we, our philosophy has is, is kind of been um, the relationship with the with the player is is more important than and, and building that relationship just on a on a personal level and getting to know that person as a person and and what they're about and what their goals are and what they want to do um, is is more valuable uh, at least at the beginning um, than than making it about equipment. Okay. Um, so getting to know a player, you know, I, I, there's players that we have now. Uh, on the PGA Tour that that never played one stitch of Cleveland Golf or Strixon product in in college. Hmm. You know, it's a it's a getting to know them and and building some trust. And a lot of times, trust is hard to to be built if if you're shoving product at them all the time. You know, so yeah. it's it's getting to know them and evaluating their game and and being there. Hey, I think I can help you from an equipment standpoint with this or this or that. And and when the timing's right you can do it. And that time it might be their sophomore year. It might be their senior year. It might be, you know, when they get out of college. Hmm. That's interesting because, well, and listeners to this show know that I'm a huge fan, of course, of Srixon, Cleveland, Zegzio. I've been playing your guys' equipment for a number of years now. Um, and, but, but a point you just rose, Michael, is interesting because we know that golfers can be pretty protective of the brands that they play. They, they have their favorites. Yep. And so um, I would imagine there's a little bit of salesmanship that goes into this too. There certainly is, and and I think, you know, coaches have relationships with companies that they have some brand loyalty to for for good reason. Uh, they've had for a long time. Companies have been good to them. Um, kids come into college and they've been they've been helped out by this company or that company for a long time, and I think you have to be respectful of those relationships um, and not just you know going in and and kind of setting those things off. So it's a it's a kind of being there and, and, and being around and, and forming those relationships without trying to just come in and set everything on fire. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. Um, you you kind of want to work with them. Things, and, and, and my wife's a high school teacher and she talks about all the time, like the, the loyalty amongst teenagers, you mm-hmm. know, when you, when a kid at 16 or 17 buys into something, um, changing their mind is, it's not easy to do. Um, mm-hmm. so, um, that, that can be a, that can be a, a hurdle for us for sure, but um, we still like the way we're we're doing it at the college level. When we hear of situations of younger players who start off hot and then all of a sudden fizzle out, and we can even, you know, I'm sure you and I can think of players in our heads as far as what that would be on, on any tour, um, a lot of times people start to blame the equipment. And, uh-huh. and I'm sure that that is something that you all have to kind of remain sensitive to. So not only is there salesmanship in it, but there's also a little bit of PR that's mixed in, I'd, I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, we, we keep a, we keep a running track of, of, of equipment switch, switches that happen, 
on the various tours and and what a player's done before that switch and and what he's done after and it's it's alarming what happens uh when a player switches equipment mm-hmm. and you know you can you can frame that story uh a lot of different ways depending on the the point you're trying to make um but i think the bottom line is um change is hard for for the best players in the world change is really difficult mm-hmm. uh, now we could we could go on a long, go down a, a serious rabbit hole and talk about, you know, uh, why certain equipment switches don't work for players. And I, I, I do think equipment matters um, very much in certain, in some instances, um, without, you know, naming names or, sure. you know, throwing anybody under the bus. But um, I think, I think change is hard, you know, and predict the, the most important thing to, for players on a PGA Tour is, is kind of known entities and predictability. And when you throw a lot of change in the mix, you throw predictability out the window, at least in the, at least in the short term. Right. Yeah. I can, I can see where that that's, that's true. And, and I'd imagine that, you know, a player wants to hit certain benchmarks in his or her career as well, you know, and, and your part of your job I'd imagine is to help them kind of see how you can help them reach those benchmarks. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And, and, uh, when when a guy's it's tough because you know when a guy's going great um he's got he has more money on the table you know from mm-hmm. an equipment company can say hey, you know you've you, you put yourself in a different category um so there's more money to may, maybe to be made on the on the open market but he's also disrupting um what's what's got him to that point so um there's a there's a balance there for sure so according to your LinkedIn page, because I'm a hard-hitting journalist, Michael, <laughs> and I <laughs> and I check out your LinkedIn page, um, you've been at, you've been at the company for quite some time, and so yep. um, you know you've been in player development according to this for about ten years, PJ Tour yep. rep for another four and a half prior to that. You know, uh, one of the questions I always like to ask folks, you know, what's it like working for the company that you work at? I mean, we talk a lot about business here. We talk a lot about the business of golf, but we also know that this is your livelihood. And so what what is your day-to-day? Uh, my day-to-day is really good. Um, I, 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 I really like the company that I work for. Um, and it's, it's I think for, for, for me, it's, it's important to feel um, kind of respected and heard, mm-hmm. you know, um, I think we still have, you know, we're, we're now owned by this, this really large, uh, company in Japan and, mm-hmm. and, but it hasn't changed kind of that initial feel from, um, when I went to work for Cleveland golf, you know, you kind of know everyone in the building, um, feel like your opinion matters, uh, your thoughts on things matters. So, um, that part is, that part is, has remained and always been the case. And, um, you know, we've got a lot of, there's a lot of guys in our tour department that, that have been there longer than I have. Mm-hmm. Um, so that kind of continuity and, and, um, kind of long-term relationships, um, they certainly carry weight and matter. Oh, a hundred percent. Absolutely. I mean, I, I've said this a few times and listeners know I'm not just blowing smoke. I mean, Cleveland's Rick on sexy. They're, they're my favorite brand to work with bar none. <laughs> I mean, you get, it's just, everyone's so damn nice. And it's, just, it's, it's just people, nice. Man. We got some good people. Absolutely. You know, and it's funny too, because I think that really filters into how you work with your customers. I mean, I've seen it, I've felt it, mm-hmm. but for folks who might not have had that experience, you know, trying Cleveland's Ricks on and, and the players that you're working with from a development standpoint, they've not had that chance to try it. Uh, how do you kind of sell or, Maybe that's the wrong term, but you know what I mean. How do you how do you kind of convince them to say, "Hey, look, you're getting so much more than just the the equipment. You're getting someone in your corner to kind of help you out." Yeah, yeah. I mean, from a from a kind of similar way, I can I can go with that that answer. Um, you know, I tell people all the time that if I if I wasn't if I wasn't going to work for Cleveland Strix on the idea of working for another golf company kind of makes my skin crawl a little bit um and i I probably (laughs) that's probably messing me up for future job opportunities (laughs) now that i want one but yeah i I do feel that way you know Mm -hmm. i I, i'm so kind of um kind of bought into to who we are as a company and 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 our equipment um and i've I, i believe it and i preach it to our players on on what the benefits are that the idea of putting on a different hat and with a different spiel just doesn't compute. 
mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So um, when I talk to 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 respective players or prospective players, um, it's it really starts with the golf ball for us um, mm-hmm. because I I believe we have the best golf ball in the world, and um, I believe that because I've seen it over and over and over with with our players and in testing, and I've seen it improve guys. Um, and it starts, it starts there. Most of our evaluation is like, I, I think I can help him with his golf ball. Um, so I, I point with a, with a player that we're recruiting, I, I point to, you know, if I've watched him play a hundred holes, mm-hmm. um, you know, I've got notes on where I think he can be better. And a lot of times it is golf ball related and we can have those conversations and I can point to, to other players that, that have made a change and, and seen improvement, uh, because of that change. So it's a lot of, a lot of history and and knowing the product and and being able to kind of clearly say i've watched you enough to know and then and then be able to say here's where i think we can we can get better so how many players do you normally interact with personally um so we have about um in development we probably have 40 ish players in a given year Mm -hmm. um maybe a few maybe a few more few less um and then you know this year i think we have 22 or three players on the corn ferry tour and i'm and those guys that kind of usually have come through development so um, definitely in week to week contact with our with our players in development um mm-hmm. then and then guys that have come through our system whether it be on the pga tour corn ferry i'm you know those guys are always calling to check in or i'm calling to check in on them just to keep that line of communication open so you know it's it's forty to forty to sixty guys on a pretty regular basis. Wow! So, and you said week to week, you you check in with them to keep that communication. Yeah, open. yeah. And I, and I think you you asked earlier to kind of circle back on kind of what our sales pitch might be. You know, in development, we're signing you know around five guys every year out of the class. You know, it could be two, it could be eight, but we have generally speaking, we have a small group of guys. I know it sounds like a lot, but mm-hmm. um, it's guys that I can. You know, if you ask me a name of a player, I could tell you what's in his bag right now. <laughs> um, so having that relationship and, and knowing, you know, I've watched a guy play a hundred holes, I've, I've, I know what's in his bag, you know. Um, being able to kind of have those deeper relationships uh, and being able to spend time on the phone with a guy or in person with him um, allows us to get it to get it right, you know, so you're not one of one of 500. You're, you know, you're a guy that, that matters to us. Which is an important thing. I mean, obviously, golf, we, we like to say it's a very close-knit community, but, I mean, there's still a lot of people that, that are involved in this game, and there are a lot of brands in this space that are really competing for the top players. And so when it comes to networking, I mean, is there – do you guys connect players with one another to kind of share experiences? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you're asking. So in other words, like for example, you're recruiting or you're working with a potential, um, uh, with a college player, let's just say, Okay. and you know, they're not quite sure if this is what they want to get into and all that. Would you connect them with another player that is currently in your program to kind of, you know, speak about their experience working with the brand? Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I I think, I think that's an, I think that's invaluable. Um, you know, especially with a lot of guys that are coming out of school. I mean, people talk about, um, you know, the the Colin Morikawa's and the Matt Wolfs and even the guys that go on and have corn fairy tour status right away. Um, but by and large, the majority of these guys coming out of college are, you know, if they're lucky, they're going to play the Canadian Tour, mm-hmm. uh, PGA Tour Canada or PGA Tour Latin America. But, you know, we're not talking about guys that, that have boatloads of money in their pocket. And the more people they can have – you know, having their back, so to speak, or in their court that they know are at home and pulling for them and, and are doing everything they can to support them outside of, you know, just mom and dad and their teacher. Um, I think those things really matter, you know, to, to, to call a kid when he finished first and call a kid when he finished last, you mm-hmm. know, and say, you know, we're, we're still behind you and you won't be, you know, we're invested in, in your success. And, um, you know, when the, when it's, when it's not going well and when it's going great. So, um, and, and that, that's the rewarding part about development is, is seeing those guys find success and move on and hopefully make a lot of money. 
Yeah. Right. That's that's always a goal for for many players <laughs> on the tour and the professional tour at least. And so, yep. um, recruitment and development. I'd imagine that that also extends for current players as well, where you know who may already be with another brand. Am I yep. right? Right in that? Okay. And so, absolutely. Does the, does anything change with that process for you? Is it, are there rules that brands have to follow, either written or unwritten? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's a sensitive. That's a question. loaded question. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, one thing we always say is is um, it, you know if you if you can't get this guy the first time, meaning, you know, when he comes out of school and he's signing his first contract, there's, he's going to sign another contract. You know, that first contract has a, has an expiration date on it, you know, so maintain those relationships, um, whether, whether player signs with you or not. And that doesn't mean you're always trying to push him toward product. It's saying hello on the range in at a PJ tour Latin America event or, a you know, at a G pro event that happens to be close to where I live, you know, mm-hmm. just always stay in touch with those guys and, and, and um, it, it, those things kind of happen by accident a lot of times. It's like you said before, a, a player that we have on staff and happens to play around with a kid that's been struggling for whatever reason and gives him your phone number and he calls you and says, hey, I'm really struggling, but I play with X and mm-hmm. really like the way you hit this or that. You know, um, I need some help, you know. Yeah. Um, so, and quite honestly, there's a lot of there's a lot of guys playing mini tour, developmental tour golf that, that don't have – a relationship with an official relationship with a golf equipment company. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like, you know, all 140 guys teeing it up in a Canadian event have, you know, signed contracts. That's just not, that's just not the case. Well, and that even goes into even the PGA tour, for example, because I know there's a handful of players. I mean, Brooks Kepka comes to mind, for example, um, I'll name right. players. You don't have to, <laughs> um, that, you know, they, they, he, as far as I'm aware of right now, he doesn't have an official contract with anyone, but, uh, we do see, you know, uh, pictures on social. We hear about players making switches in their, in their bag, sometimes mid tournament. Yep. And right. are you, are, are folks like yourself involved in that in any way, or do you become aware of it and say, Oh, this person wanted to try this out. We should reach out to him or her. Yeah, I, I think our our first priority is. I mean, obviously, if, if you have a, a, a marquee, uh, you know, huge name that's a that's a free agent that wants to put um, some of your clubs in play, then then that's all. You know, it's obviously an opportunity mm-hmm. um, that for a, for an equipment company on platforms like you guys, where you're going to get eyeballs on it and people are going to you know talk about it and care about it. Um, I think our first priority is always making sure that our players that are on staff are, are taken care of week in and week out on mm-hmm. tour. So I w- there's not a, for us, there's not a lot of solicitation um, for, for kind of free agents on trying to get a club here or there mm-hmm. in play. Um, because we're not a necessarily a numbers driven company. We're not trying to win a, a ball count or a driver count or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever the case may be. So when that's, when that's not a motivating factor, it's, you're not always out kind of hunting that down, so to speak. Right. Um, but there's certainly opportunities for that. And again, it's a, it's a really a relationship thing or player happened to be playing with another player and says, Hey, I like the way you hit that. And we've, I mean, our irons, we've got, we've got a handful or more guys that are, that are free agent guys that are playing our irons on tour right now. Mm. Um, because they have that, they have that re- reputation, you know, mm-hmm. they're really good. <laughs> yeah, 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 they are. <laughs> Definitely. You, you don't have to sell me on that. Believe me. Um, so once again, listeners, we're talking with Mr. Michael Jolly of Cleveland Strix on Zegzio. He is a uh, tour rep working in player development specifically. And Michael, you know, uh, this has been very informative. And if there was a, a misconception that the lay person might have about the type of job that you guys do in player development, what would that be? And what would you say to that misconception? Is there something you hear often? Um, misconception about what you do. I, I don't know that there's a, I don't know that there's a misconception. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I, I think maybe the misconception may be that from a from an equipment and a, and a fitting standpoint that that 
that fitting the best players in the world is not that difficult. <laughs> <laughs> and the misconception is that it is difficult. Uh, yeah. It's not that difficult to, 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 to fit the best players in the world. Um, I mean, if you look at, if you look what's in the bags of, of the guys across the PGA tour, there's some, there's some variants in graphite wood shafts, mm-hmm. but you know, 78% play the same, basically say, play the same iron shaft. You mm-hmm. know, it's not, it, it's a, guys are pretty ingrained to, to what they use. Um, it's a, it's that, that part of the job is it's fun and you can find, you know, you're trying to find five yards here, or a little bit of consistency there. So it's not a, um, the day to day fitting part with tour players is not, um, uh, is not, it's not maybe what it, maybe what it seems. And I don't want to, mm-hmm. I don't really mean the, the, sure. and, and diminish the, the fitting part of it, but it's, it's not a, it's not always uh, super involved, crazy in the weed details uh, mm-hmm. process. Yeah, well, and that's, and that's true, and and that rings true to me because I know that there are some players that certainly go on one extreme where it, it might uh-huh. get very in depth, and you know, there's stories of of some of the legends in the game that can feel differences in their hands as opposed to what machines are telling them. But then there's also players like you just mentioned who they, they know what they like. And yep. they got to where they are playing what they've played. And it's going to take a lot of convincing for them to to make a switch into something new. And, and in some yep. instances, and my listeners are going to probably send me some hate mail on this, in some instances, new isn't always better. It's yep. just, you know, yep. you have to be comfortable with that, what, what you're playing. I mean, that's my perception or interpretation of what, what you were just talking about. Yeah, and I think the, the fitting process, I mean, to... to to take this a little different direction, I mean, so much of the, the fitting process for me in development is fitting over the phone um, mm. because I can't always be there. You know, we've got you got sixty guys in all parts of the world, um, and luckily I've watched them all play. Um, so I, when a guy's struggling with something, um, you know, I have a frame of reference. But a lot of times it's it's talking for thirty minutes on the phone and having our guys in our tour department. Um, in Huntington Beach, which are phenomenal guys, uh, you know, sending them something that that hopefully works. Mm-hmm. Um, so that 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 fitting process, you know, it it it, it can it changes, and uh, it's it's not always uh, not always easy to get right on the, the first time. But when you have that experience with guys, you can we can ultimately get there um, pretty quick. Yeah, um, just a just a matter of the just a matter of the player. Well, and that speaks to the importance of establishing that that relationship early on, which which you touched yep. on earlier. So, yeah, that that yep. makes a lot of sense. Well, once again, folks, we're speaking with Mr. Michael Jolly of uh, Cleveland Strixon and Zegzio. Michael, thanks so much for for hopping on. Uh, how are you holding up with everything that's going on in the world? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's interesting, you know. As I got it, it uh, spent the last you know, 15 years traveling all the time, uh, to not be traveling mm-hmm. is, uh, is, is a little interesting. I've, I'm, I've got my, uh, my laptop on fire and doing a bunch of, uh, research and kind of put some, some stuff together on some, some players and trying to organize kind of what's in all of our guys bag at the moment, trying to see any kind of trends on why we got a lot of guys using this or that and just look, trying to create some, some busy work. Um, and just trying to take the time to communicate with, with all our guys. I, you know, it's the frustrating part is knowing we got some guys out there that, that need to go make some money. You right. Know? I mean, you don't, we, we got, we got guys that are depending on having tournaments to play, um, that, that don't have that opportunity right now. So I'm, I'm hoping there's some, some light at the end of the tunnel where guys can go out and, and play some golf. Yeah, I, I imagine that too. And listeners, you're you're hearing two of my coworkers barking downstairs right now because <laughs> I'm working from home as well. Uh, and you know, it's 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 a different change, and I think it's something that a lot of people, of course, are doing right now. And so, you know, Michael, obviously, uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, thanks so much for coming on and chatting with us. And I, I love what you guys do out there. So keep it up. You're doing great work. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate it.